Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3 here, back another kicking action figure review. Today I have another fun Power Ranger review for you guys today. It is a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers character from the Bandai America Power Rangers Legacy 6 inch line, Armored Red Ranger. This was one of the last figures they released for the Legacy line, which is now over. And it was a GameStop exclusive as well. Uh, towards the end of the line, Bandai was like, let's just do a bunch of big cash grabs to get as much money from the Power Rangers license as that we can before we lose it to Hasbro. So they re released everything again. They released all the Rangers they'd made in the 6-inch scale again. Re-released every single one, destroying their collector value. Re-released every single Zord and all that stuff. And it was kind of like, ouch, thanks a lot. But, uh, well, in some ways it was good because people who missed out on figures uh, could get some that they didn't have, but others lost their collectible value. So we'll see what happens with those. But this one didn't get re-released because it came out shortly beforehand. And it was also a pretty cheap figure to make. They just gave him the power sword. They just took the Red Ranger mold Gave him the upper arms from the Green Ranger mold. Gave him Green Ranger's Dragon Shield. Uh, gave him this sword from the metallic, kind of clear Red Ranger. And then they gave him the regular accessories from the normal Red Ranger. And some accessories from Green Ranger as well. But not all of Green Ranger's accessories. So accessory-wise, as I said, he has the Power Sword. Which is good, because that's what I wanted to display him with anyways. So that's nice. He also comes with a folded up power blaster. I don't see the point of having the folded up blaster if you aren't going to have a version of it that he can hold, whether it be in sword or blaster mode. I don't care. But why give us just this one? Because all it can do is sit on his side. Sure, he can hold it in his hand, but what's the point of having him hold it in his hand? Anyways, this pegs on the side of him. I, I know it fits in there well because I've seen this multiple times. And he also comes with... A dragon dagger, which is very well painted. I'll give it that. All these accessories are very well painted. Uh, so it looks good. And it also has a holster. But I'm not going to display any, with him with any of that stuff on him. Because I got... I'm, I'm just fine with this sword. You know, I have multiple Green Rangers displayed with... The flute. <laughs> and I have... No, I don't, I don't, I just don't care about the folded up blaster. So yeah, he has the articulation you would expect, especially if you have the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, you know exactly what to expect, oops, because it is the same. You got side to side on the head, up and down on the head, good ab movement actually, you see how the diamond sticks out a little, so that he can crunch all the way down, that was a good point. You know, I feel like the first, because this was a, this was something they did in the first wave, and the first wave of this toy line really was the best wave. That's really where they gave us the best figures, honestly. But uh, up and down on the arm, only up that far because of the dragon shield. Forward and back on the arm, it can go all the way around, but you know it's still hindered a little by the shield. Bicep swivel, double elbow bend. You have a glove swivel, forward and back. Rotation on the hand, waist, in and out, thigh, double knee, boot, up and down, ankle pivot. So yeah, you know, the articulation is what you would expect. Detail and paint wise, uh, he seems to be painted pretty well. He has a nice shiny, uh, everything that needs to be shiny on him and his accessories is shiny. As you see, the dragon shield, all the gold is shiny, the morpher is shiny. He even has a bit of shine in the silver on his head, which is nice. So, like, he looks good, you know, painted up on the back. He's a good-looking figure, and he's a good size as well. So let's take a look at his size. Uh, uh, while I'm getting this set up, I just want to say that I know I kind of criticized this figure for just being a cash grab. And it is, but at the same time, I mean, they nailed they nailed the design of the character, right? <laughs> I mean, um, I didn't expect them to do anything big and fancy for this figure when it was announced. 
Uh, and when I pre-ordered it, I because, I mean, all it is is just Red Ranger with that on, but they did give us the sword and all the accessories he needs. Of course, the only reason they did that is because he didn't have a build a mega sword piece, but still. I'm actually really looking forward to Hasbro's figures. They're not out in America at the time of recording this, so we'll see. First size comparisons with another male Ranger from this line. Black in space. He's kind of my go-to for the 6-inch Power Ranger size comparisons right now until the Lightning series comes out. I'll still compare these with the Lightning series, though. And then a female Ranger. Normally Mighty Morphin Pink's my go-to, but I feel like showing off a different one. One of my favorite Rangers of all time, and... I would say my favorite Yellow Ranger of all time. Kira, also known as Dino Thunder Yellow. She looks good with him too. You know, they're Dino Rangers. You gotta have the Dino Rangers together, right? And if you want to see them with some other Toku characters, here's a crossover that actually makes sense. Kamen Rider O's. This is from the Legend Rider... 6-inch vinyl toy line. And, you know, I really like these Kamen Rider vinyl dolls. You can get them for, like, 6 bucks on Hobby Link Japan. They're 6 inches. They're really well painted and everything. Um, and they look pretty good together, you know? The detail on this guy is better, but his articulation is better, so... But, yeah. I like that. They cross over all the time in Japan. They've even... Actually, Masked Rider, which is our Kamen Rider, which only had, like, which had like almost no seasons. <laughs> but it's actually a spin-off of Power Rangers here, so they actually did take place in the same universe. And if you want to see him with some Ultraman, I have some six inch Ultraman here as well. Here's the Sophie Spirits Ultraman Ginga. I I know Ultraman and Power Rangers aren't the same size. You don't have to tell me that. Uh and he's a little short even if they were the same size. But uh Ultraman can shrink and grow at will, especially Jenga. His size is microscopic to infinite, according to the wiki. So, Also, we've seen him uh, fluctuate his size, especially in the finale of the first season of his show. If you want to see him with a Build-A-Megazord, here is his Build-A-Megazord. Well, he didn't have a Build-A-Megazord piece, but this is the Megazord he would pilot. Mighty Morphin Megazord. I've reviewed all the figures you've seen so far, by the way. I actually have reviewed all the figures you're going to see in this video, so keep that in mind. I think this was my last Power Ranger review, just to show him with a villain, and also one of the last Bandai Power Ranger figures. The Evil Red Ranger from the Anniversary Special. This is from the Action Hero line, which was their cheaper uh, line for kids. I mean, obviously, they don't scale well together, but that's how you live that life, right? So, all in all, what are my final thoughts on the Bandai America Power Rangers Legacy Mighty Morphin Armored Red Ranger figure? I mean, he's cool. I'm not going to say he's a bad figure, because I don't think he is a bad figure. I think this line could have done more. Uh, Accessory-wise, he comes with way more than most Rangers do in this line. Uh, I do have all the figures in this line. I'm miss I, I didn't get the exclusive Comic-Con version of him or of the uh, 2017 Megazord or the Tommy 3-pack because they were all just like repaints basically. And I didn't need them. I didn't get the metallic Mighty Morphin Rangers either because I didn't feel they were different enough to warrant me buying more of them since I already had the regular team. But, I mean, he is different enough. You know, he's got different uh, biceps. He's got the dragon shield. He has really all the accessories he needs. Because, to be honest, all I would have been 100% content with these two and then the sword I have him holding. I don't think he really needed the power blaster, but they gave it to him. However, I think it is pointless if you don't have it in at least one of its other forms. At least to give us the gun form as well if you're going to give us the folded up form. You know? So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below. Facebook, Twitter, etc. I'll have more Power Ranger reviews coming soon. I have three Psycho Rangers to review. 
which I honestly might just do in one video because they're all the same sculpts. Uh, I still haven't reviewed Lord Dracon because I kind of don't want to open him. <laughs> I got more Power Rangers, more Common Riders, DC, Marvel, Universal Monsters, Pacific Rim, Dragon Ball, Red Man, uh, Star Wars. Did I say Pacific Rim? I don't know. But I have Super Sentai as well, uh, which is just Japanese Power Rangers. So, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Support us on Patreon, and I will see you all later.